I'm here at my own land, which I call Bear Island this morning to talk about a few simple tools for managing your own forest efficiently. Most forest landowners are weekend warriors. They have this limited amount of time to work in their woods. Maybe they need to harvest a few cords of firewood a year and they wanna figure out how to maximize the value of their time, both in terms of growing a healthy forest and also providing really great wildlife habitat. In this video, I'm gonna present five simple tools for both maximizing your efficiency, working in the woods, and also maximizing the positive benefit of your work. So step one in managing your forest efficiently is that you're going to leave all dead trees alone. So what that means is dead standing trees, trees that have fallen over, deadwood on the forest floor, you're just gonna let that be. And there's a couple different reasons for it. One is that deadwood, dead standing trees are really important habitats. Deadwood on the forest floor, for instance, is important to regulating soil hydrology, critical to building soils, to storing carbon, and lots of other things. Dead standing trees like the one behind me and trees that have cavities in them are really, really important resources for wildlife and will eventually become deadwood on the forest floor. Most of the landowners that I meet, they spend their time cutting down trees that have already died and cutting up trees that have fallen over. And when you do that, what you're missing is the opportunity to affect a more positive change in the forest. The second tool you're gonna to use is something called crop tree release. If you wanna learn more about crop tree release, there's a longer video about this on my YouTube channel. Basically, the idea of crop tree release is that instead of going into the forest and looking at all the trees that need to go, all the trees that are unhealthy, that maybe have defects, what you instead want to look at is all the trees that you want to grow. Find your healthiest trees and release them from competition individually. What that means is finding what we call crop trees, which are healthy trees of a variety of different species with nice symmetrical crowns, no obvious wounds or defects. And you cut the trees which are competing with your crop trees. And how you judge that is it's the trees whose crowns are touching the crown of your crop tree. The thing that makes crop tree release such an important tool when you're trying to work efficiently in your forest is that it targets your effort where you can do the maximum amount of good. So instead of worrying about cutting every unhealthy tree in your forest and never getting anywhere, you're saying, how can I release each of my healthiest trees individually? So tool number three is getting comfortable with the idea of cutting trees and leaving them on the ground. When I'm managing my forest, what I find is that there's a lot of trees that are sort of smaller and more marginal that really aren't worth pulling out of the woods. And that if I just cut that tree and lay it on the ground, I can accomplish way more. I can release way more crop trees. I can get way more done. So I leave those smaller and more commercially marginal trees on the ground, and I only spend the time to pull out bigger trees. As you're leaving trees on the ground, you're also doing something positive. So we know that dead wood is a really, really important part of our forests. It does all these really important things and provides all these important habitats. And that our modern day forests, because of their land use history, really don't have a lot of it. So in addition to making your time more efficient, you're also providing this really important structure, dead wood, which will enrich your forest. Step number four is getting comfortable with girdling trees. So what you're gonna find as you're releasing crop trees is that sometimes you're gonna run into unhealthy trees that are competing with your crop tree, but are too dangerous or difficult to fell, or are a species like aspen, which maybe don't make great firewood, and so it's not worth felling them. What girdling is, is basically a means to kill a tree without felling it. So you're gonna cut a shallow groove, just touching the wood of that tree, severing its cambium, and you're gonna go all the way around the circumference of the tree, make two parallel cuts like that, and over the course of a number of years, it will kill the tree. So what you find when you start girdling trees is that it's way faster and way easier than felling trees. It's probably not appropriate for every tree that's competing with a crop tree in your forest, but for some trees like those I've described, it's a really awesome tool. The fifth tool is to get comfortable with messiness. Now, as you start to fell trees, your instincts are gonna tell you that you should cut up those treetops, that you should make the branches all lie flat on the ground. And there's a lot of aesthetic reasons for this. It looks nice, but there's actually no ecological or forest health reason for it. In fact, those trees laying on the ground and those treetops that look so ugly to us are providing an array of habitats and benefits that are really, really important and cutting them up actually diminishes those benefits. So what you're gonna do is, when you fell a tree that you're leaving on the ground, you fell it and you walk away. When you cut a tree that you're gonna process for firewood or something like that, you cut off the tree top and you just walk away. So what you'll find is that this will make your, your work in the woods more efficient because it's one less thing that you need to do. And it also make it easier and safer because you don't need to wade through treetops cutting up branches and stuff like that. 
So while different forests on different sites and in different situations will require different things, these tools are, in general, a great way to make your work in the woods more efficient while also improving the health and the habitat of your forest. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to check out some of the other videos on the channel and to check out some of my articles and other resources on my link tree at the link below.